such a peach, peaceful place here in Lancaster County. Everybody who uh, watches my videos knows how much I love Lancaster County. It's just, it's one of the best places to live in terms of quality of life. Probably uh, just about anywhere in the world. But anyway, such a peaceful place. Why such a name for my video? The Battle of the Hempstone. Well, first of all, you have to understand what we're looking at here. You're probably like, Les, what are you showing me here? Well, if you've watched my other videos, you know what you're looking at. You're looking at a hemp millstone. Now this one here has particular significance to uh, me because I had my eye on this hemp stone. I wanted it. Actually, uh, there was a man named Burkholder who lived in a little town called Elm Town, Elm, which is about, I don't know, a ways from here. It's, we're still in Lancaster County. This is Rafo Township. But anyway, the guy named Burkholder, he had hundreds of millstones and all types of antique stonework that he had collected over a period of years. And he sat in his yard, you know, for who knows how long, decades, I think it took him to, uh, to collect all these millstones. Some of them were even passed through his family. Well, one of the stones he had in his collection, in particular interest of me, was this particular hempstone. I always wanted it. And one day, he had a sale. He advertised it really good, and hundreds of people came. Matter of fact, I think it was about a thousand people came to his millstone sale. These were all people that are interested in millstones. Now, they didn't know about the hemp millstones. Hardly anybody uh, did know the hemp stones. Basically, uh, before my research, Probably only a handful of people in the world knew what a hempstone was. And that's one thing I'm um, happy to be able to do is contribute this bit of uh, knowledge and information, which I think is important for the world to know. Uh, I'm happy that I was able to do that. Anyway, I didn't particularly have the money to buy the hempstone, but my friend, Brian Burkholder, he gave me a credit card check. And he said, I want you to go there to that auction, and I want you to bid on that hemp stone for me. So I said, sure, I'll, uh, I'll do that. He told me, now I only have a certain amount of money. He said, don't go over $3,000. If you can get it for less than $3,000, try to get it for $500 or $1,000 or $1,500 or $2,000, whatever you can. Don't go over $3,000. $3,000 is the max that I will go. So I went to... Uh, I went to uh, the millstone sale and it was pretty dramatic. All his uh, stone works were going for thousands of dollars. And we went one by one to probably a hundred different pieces of stone work and finally we came to this millstone. There was only about five or six of us that were bidding on this stone. I was one of them. And uh, picture this, there's about five or six of us standing in a circle around this stone. And then all around us were hundreds of eager spectators in anticipation of, uh, you know, how this sale was going to go. But now, an added element of uh, dramatic tension in the story was it was pouring down raining in buckets about as heavy as it possibly can rain. So I stood there, the auctioneer started going, hundred dollars, hundred dollars, you know, however they do, I can't do like an uh, auctioneer. But anyway, I bid for five hundred dollars. All of a sudden it went around to the next guy, five fifty, six hundred, six fifty, seven came to me, seven fifty. So I was like, sure, I bid I bid on it. Then next thing came to me again for a thousand. All of a sudden it made the circles, it kept going, 
1,100, 1,200, 1,300. Next thing you know, it was 2,000 in like no time. And uh, all of a sudden, within like a minute, it was uh, 3,000. So it came to me, $3,000. And uh, it went up to 3,500. It came to me, and uh, I thought to myself, now, I'm not going to lose the hempstone for $500 because he told me to only bid $3,000. So I bid $3,500, and it quickly, it went around the circle up to $4,000. And, it, and uh, it's, I, I bid again. Next thing you know, I bid $5,000 on the hempstone. And I thought, my God, what have I done? I just bid $5,000. He told me not to go over $3,000. I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I could help him pay it or something like that. Well, it quickly went up over 5,000, so I had to drop out. It went up to 5,500, and the bidding froze there. And uh, that's about when I interjected. I said, it's very rare. It's an old hemp millstone from the Lancaster County Hemp Mills. The auctioneer said, what is it? So I repeated it to the auctioneer, and the auctioneer told everybody, and they all got excited. And a feverish pitch uh, swept the uh, uh, people that were uh, bidding on this thing, and all, it spiraled up to 6000 7000 8000 spiraled all the way up to $8,800. That's what, how much this stone is worth. It's a perfect specimen. Out of all the hemp stones that we've found in museums and private collections, this is one of my favorite. Uh, it's actually bigger than what it is. You know, you can't really see because uh, got this mulch here. It actually goes down much deeper, and that's why I kind of showed you from this angle. Um, it, it, you can tell there's more volume to it. that. That bush is in the way. I kind of wish that bush wasn't there, but. Uh, just perfect. It's smooth. It looks like it has these little ridges, and I've never really been able to determine if that's natural wear and tear or from chipping it away at the stone or, or uh, if it was served a purpose. Uh, there's the cavity of the stone. If you see my other uh, millstone videos, I explained about how a wooden block was inserted in this uh, cavity of the stone, and then the iron axle went through that. And naturally, uh, this stone, when it was in the hemp mill, it rolled on its side, so you're looking at it, uh, you know, not upside down, but uh, not how it's supposed to be either. It should be more like, I don't know if that works, but anyway, uh, it rolled on its side and it rolled, it was built conical so that it would uh, roll uh, in a circular motion over the uh, hemp fiber and it softened it up and it was one of the stages of processing that hemp had to go through. In 1720 to 1870, in those years, there were over 100 water-powered mills for processing hemp fiber, just in Lancaster County alone, and there were dozens more in all of the surrounding counties. So, uh, out of those 100 mills, I know of at least two dozen of these hemp millstones in museums and private collections. I'm going to get around to uh, showing you some of the other hemp stones eventually. Eventually, I will, uh, when I get a chance, and each one has fascinating stories behind it and uh, this stone here was bought by the man Jim Keener. Jim Keener is a landscaper and he does remarkable landscaping work. He has all kinds of stones but now actually on his property I think uh, if I'm not mistaken he bought at least four and maybe it's even five hemp millstones because I was at another uh, millstone sale uh, in my hometown of Ephrata, they had eight hemp stones for sale, and my friend Brian Burkholder was able to buy two of those stones. And those two stones, uh, well, he went to Iraq to work, not in the military, he went over there to uh, cook. He's a cook. So, anyway, when he went over to Iraq, he didn't know what he was going to do with his hemp stones. So, for the last about five or six years, I've been the keeper of the hemp stones. They're not mine, they're Brian Burkholder's, but. Uh, Anyway, at that same millstone sale, uh, I think Jim Keener brought four of the hempstones there. So I think he has five in his collection right now. Anyway, that's the story of the Battle of the Hempstone. I hope you uh, found it interesting and informative. And don't forget to buy my book, Hempstone Heritage, A History of the Hemp Industry in Lancaster County. Uh, 
I'm kind of freestyling and ad living. My book isn't that way. My book is a scholarly dissertation on the hemp industry. Those are uh, two hemp stones right there. So, I'll leave you with this. Let's see, I got an idea. So, there we go. The battle of the hempstone.